Hi guys, thinking about how to root your Android phone in 2025? Rooting unlocks ultimate control over your device to install custom ROMs, kernels, and more. Today, I'll guide you through the best way to root almost any Android phone using Magisk. This Magisk root method works great for Android 14, Android 15, and even recent older versions. But first, a quick disclaimer. Rooting voids your warranty and can be risky if not done properly. Follow this guide carefully and proceed at your own risk. Also keep in mind, this specific Magisk root method relies on fastboot. So it won't work for Samsung devices, but don't worry, I've already made a separate video for that. You can find the link in the description below. Furthermore, you must be able to unlock the bootloader to root your Android device. If your manufacturer restricts bootloader unlocking, like on newer Huawei devices, then routing won't be possible. All right, before we dive into the actual routing process, let's quickly gather everything you'll need, a Windows, Mac, or Linux PC, a USB cable to connect your device to the PC, some essential files like ADB and Fastboot tools, the Magisk APK, and the firmware for your device. We'll go through all the steps later in the video. All right, guys, for this video, I'm using CMF Phone 1 by nothing to demonstrate how to root any Android phone using Magisk. As you can see, Magisk is not yet installed on the device. To further confirm, let me open Root Checker app. And as expected, it shows, sorry, root access is not properly installed on this device. This clearly means the phone is not rooted yet, but we're about to change that. Now, let's get started. So, to root your Android device, the first and most important step is to unlock the bootloader. This step will wipe all your data, so make sure you've backed up everything. First go to Settings, then About Phone. Find the build number and tap it 7 times. Until you see, you are now a developer. Good. Now head back one screen and go into the System menu. Next, scroll down in Developer Options and find the OEM Unlocking option. Make sure to enable it. Next, scroll down just a bit further and enable the USB debugging option. This allows your phone to communicate with your PC for the routing process. Perfect. Phone setup is done for now. Let's switch over to the PC. On the PC, open any browser and search for platform tools. Click on the first result for SDK platform tools. Once the page loads, scroll down and download the platform tools for your operating system. I am using Windows, so let me download the Windows version. Alright, Platform Tools is now downloaded. Let me quickly extract it. A Platform Tools is extracted. Now open that folder. Here, click on the address bar, type CMD and hit Enter. This will open command prompt inside the Platform Tools folder. In the command prompt, type ADB devices, then press enter. As you can see, a pop-up has appeared on the phone asking for USB debugging authorization. Simply tap on allow to grant the permission. Now, go back to the command prompt and type ADB devices once again. This time, you should see a serial number displayed on the screen. That means your device is successfully connected and we're ready for the next step. Now, type A DB Reboot Bootloader and press Enter. Your phone will now restart and enter into fast boot mode. So wait for it. Once your device is in fast boot mode, type fast boot devices in the command prompt and press Enter. Now, we got nothing on the screen. This means the drivers are not properly installed. To fix this, right click on the Windows logo and open Device Manager. Here, as you can see, there is a warning icon next to the device under other devices. Now, right click on it and select the second option. Next, click on Let me pick from a list of available drivers on my PC. Here, scroll down and look for Android phone. Now, select Android bootloader interface and then click on Next. Once the installation is complete, you should see a message confirming that the driver was successfully installed. Now, Let's go back to the command prompt and check if the device is detected. And yes, this time, as you can see a serial number on the screen, that means your device is now properly detected in fastboot mode. 
Now, let's proceed with unlocking the bootloader. The bootloader unlocking command varies slightly depending on your device manufacturer and model. For older devices like some Google, Motorola and HTC models, you'll likely use Fastboot OEM Unlock. But for newer devices, Google Pixel, OnePlus, Xiaomi, nothing, etc., the command is typically Fastboot Flashing Unlock. Since I'm using a Nothing phone, Fastboot Flashing Unlock is the correct command for me. Once you hit enter, look at your phone. A confirmation screen will appear and the way you confirm depends on your device. On Google Pixel and OnePlus, use the volume buttons to highlight, unlock the bootloader, then press the power button to select it. On this Nothing phone and possibly others, you may only need to press volume up or down to confirm. If the unlock screen times out, just run the command again and quickly press any volume button to confirm. Carefully follow the specific instructions displayed on your phone screen to proceed. Once unlocked, it's time to reboot the device. Simply type fastboot reboot in the terminal, then press enter. Once confirmed, the device will be formatted and will reboot automatically. Now, let the phone reboot and complete the initial setup. and the device has now rebooted. Let me quickly open developer options to confirm if the bootloader is unlocked. As you can see, OEM unlocking is grayed out and shows already unlocked. This confirms that the bootloader has been successfully unlocked. All right, with the bootloader unlocked, let's move on to step two. Downloading the correct firmware to root your Android phone. First, we need to check the build number, so let's do that. Go to settings, then scroll down and tap on about phone. Here, look for the build number and note it down. This will help us download the correct firmware for our device. So let's move on to the PC screen. Now on the PC, open any browser and search for your device's firmware using the build number you just noted. You will definitely find your device firmware on official or unofficial websites. So. Here I found a firmware file that matches my build number. Let me go ahead and click on it to start the download. Since nothing has only a few models, we're able to download the boot image directly. But for most other brands, you'll need to extract the boot.img manually from the full firmware package. So here is the downloaded firmware file. Let me quickly extract it. Inside the extracted folder, you'll find two boot files, initboot.img and boot.img. If your firmware contains initboot.img, use that for patching. Otherwise, just use the boot to img file. For newer devices, especially on Android 13 and above, you'll mostly need to use initboot.img. All right, let me copy the init underscore boot.img file and paste it into the internal storage of the device. This file will be used in the next step where we'll patch it using the Magisk app. Once the patching is done, it will allow us to root the Android device successfully. So the boot file is now copied to the device's internal memory. Now let's move on to the next step, creating the Magisk patched file to root your Android device. First, you need to download and install the Magisk app on your phone. Once installed, open the Magisk app. Tap on install, then choose the option select and patch a file. Now browse and select the boot image you just copied to your device. Once selected, simply tap on let's go to start the patching process. After the patching is complete, the patched file will be saved in the download folder. It will likely have magisk underscore patched in its file name. All right, magisk patched file is now saved in the download folder. And yes, here is our file. Now it's time to move this file to the PC. So let's switch to the PC screen. So here is our Magisk patched file. Let me copy it and paste it into the platform tools folder. Once copied, open command prompt inside the platform tools folder. Now we are ready for the final step four, flashing the Magisk patched file to achieve root on your Android device. First, we need to boot the device into fast boot mode, just like we did earlier. Start by checking if the device is properly connected. Once you see the device listed, it means it's properly attached. Now, type the following command to boot into fastboot mode. 
ADB Reboot Bootloader. Then press enter. Once the device is in fast boot mode, we're ready to flash the Magisk patched file. To confirm that the device is in fast boot mode, type fast boot devices. Then press enter. If your device is detected, you will see a serial number listed. Now it's time to flash the Magisk patched file. Pay close attention to the next command as it depends on which file you patched earlier. If you patched init boot file, type fast boot flash init underscore boot followed by the path of patched file. If your firmware only had boot.image and you patched that instead. In that case, type the following command fast boot flash boot followed by the path of patched file. Double check that you're using the correct command init boot or boot before proceeding. Now, Press enter to flash the magisk patched file. Once it says OK on the screen, that means the flashing is complete. Your device is now patched with magisk. Let's reboot it. So type fastboot reboot to reboot the device. The first boot might take some time, so be patient and wait for the device to boot up properly. All right, the device is now booted up. To confirm if the device is rooted or not, open the magisk manager app. And yes, Magisk 28.1 is now installed. Let's also verify root access using the root checker app. So, as you can see, it shows congratulations. Root access is properly installed on this device. That means the routing process was successful and your Android device is now fully rooted with Magisk. And that's it. You've successfully rooted your Android phone in 2025 using Magisk. This step-by-step -step method works for all Android phones, including Nothing, Pixel, OnePlus, Redmi, Realme, Oppo, Motorola, and many others. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you run into any issues, drop a comment with your device model and build number, and I'll try to help. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. This is Jarvis signing off.